SmartArt is a collection of graphic diagrams used to visually communicate information. And to see these diagrams, or the SmartArt, come up here and click on the Insert tab, go to the Illustrations group, and click on SmartArt. Well, you can see when I hover over it in the pop-up, it says SmartArt graphics range from graphical lists and process diagrams to more complex ones, like organization charts. Let's go ahead and click on it to see a list of all the different categories of diagrams, like lists or process, process. When you select it, you can come over here to the middle section, hover over one of the examples, and that one you can see in the pop-up, the name of it is Basic Process. Select it to get the details over here. And it says it's used to show a progression or sequential step in a task process or workflow. Like, first you have to eat your dinner, and then you can have treats, and then you can go outside and play. Let's go ahead and choose Hierarchy. Do something a bit more complex, like this one right here, Organization Chart, select it, and it's used to show the hierarchical information or reporting relationships in an organization. So up at the top is the Chief Executive, the CEO, and then you've got the Assistant to the CEO. That sits on the side of it, and then everything below that can go from VPs, and then below them their assistants, and then below that uh, managers, and so on. In any case, let's go ahead and click OK. And there we go. It adds a few basic shapes to start off with. And if you have more people to add to your organization chart, well, we can add more shapes where we can take them away. But first off, you've got the first shape up at the top. And so that would be, again, the president or the CEO. You can go ahead and click inside of it to add text. Or let's see, over to the left-hand side, you have the text pane. Let me click on the title bar of the text pane to drag it so we can see it over here. And you can see the cursor's flashing in that bullet point. And so it's got its own hierarchy structure here. And so when I go down to the next point, or that little image here that represents the assistant to the president or CEO, it selects the corresponding shape there. Or you can select any one of these three down below. And you can see it selects the corresponding shape. Now there's pros and cons between typing within the text boxes here versus using the text pane. So if you close out of it, and you're like, oh, I want to use the text pane. Then with your SmartArt selected, you get the Related Contextual Design tab. Come over to the Create Graphic group and click on Text Pane. To appear, Text Pane to disappear. Text Pane to appear, well, in any case, click and drag the title bar. So up here, I can go ahead and the pros for doing it within the text pane is that when it comes to going from one shape to the next or one bullet point to the next, you can just use the down arrow keys. So for the first shape, up at the top, it's going to be me, Kurt. After I type it in, you can see it takes up almost the entire shape. Yeah, how am I going to get my last name in there, let alone my title? Well, just keep typing, because it will do something fancy. It'll do a best fit. It'll keep shrinking the size of the font until it fits everything within it. So if you keep on typing, well, it's not only going to shrink the shape for the CEO, but all the other shapes as well. As you can see, the text in those shapes have also shrunk. That way it doesn't look too odd where you've got somebody with a smaller name as opposed to somebody with a larger name that's in larger text. But you can always make it custom to that shape to change it so it's always that size. But by default, it's going to update all the other shapes to keep all the text within all the shapes at the same size. So in the diagram, if I wanted to go to the next shape, I'd have to move my mouse. But over here in the text pane, I can just hit the down arrow key and it advances to the next shape and I can go ahead and type in. There you go. Oh, wait a second. I need to add who I am within the organization. I'm the president. So I can just go ahead and arrow back up. And isn't that simpler than just coming over here and moving the mouse back and forth? You can keep your hand strictly on the keyboard and not have to raise one hand to work the mouse if you're working in the text pane. Now to go ahead and add the title for the person, hold down the shift key and hit enter, and it does a soft return, as we learned in an earlier training video. So we can go ahead and type in president, there you go. Or same thing, if you go ahead and delete that. Whoops, I deleted much more than I realized. So what we need to do is go ahead and hit undo, or, as I'll show you in just a minute, if you do delete, as you can see here, the shapes by deleting one of the bullets, you can go ahead and come up here and add a shape. But I digress. Let's go back to where we were. Let me go ahead and hit the backspace key several times. There we go. 
And then if you want to add the title within the shape, then well, come over here, click after the last name. Same thing, hold down the shift key, hit enter, and then you can type in, there you go. So either or, let me go ahead and close out of here, keep it visually appealing for this training video by typing the text within the shapes. And then let's go down into Doc Mix Stuffins, Shift Enter, AA for Alcoholics Anonymous or Administrative Assistant, you know, like whatever. And then we can go ahead and type in the rest. And then to go to the next shape, I have to use the mouse. And there we go. There's my organization. Well, at least for now, until we go ahead and add more employees and or also when some leave, we need to know how to go ahead and remove their corresponding shapes or leave it vacant until we get somebody to replace them. Now let's go ahead and focus up here on the design tab in the create graphic group, all the different options that we get. First off, how about adding a shape? So if you want to add a shape, first off, you need to select the shape that you want to add it to. So if I want to add more assistants to me or more subordinates to me that aren't my assistants, maybe additional VPs, then I would want to select my shape here. So speaking of which, if you want to get rid of a shape, as we learned in the text pane, you can actually delete the bullet or go ahead and click on the border of a shape and hit the delete key and it's gone. Now to go ahead and add a shape, because I'm like, wait a second, let's see, we got rid of Doc. We need to add another administrative assistant to me. So we want to go ahead and click inside my shape and then come up here and click on add shape and you get all the different options. You can add a shape after or before. What that means is that it's at the same level. So after means, well, to the right of my shape or before means to the left of it. So at the same level and I don't want anybody at the same level as me so I'm not going to do that, at least not yet. And then you can add a shape above or below or add an assistant. Of course, assistant will be below but not so far below because the next level is going to be the VPs. We can't have the assistant below the VPs, which would be below the managers, and have this line come all the way around them to come up to connect here to say they're in direct contact with me. Instead, when I click on Add Assistant, it adds it below me but to the side. So you know as far as the hierarchical structure, while they do have direct contact with me, they're not directly below me. As far as decision making goes, it's the VPs. So I can come in here and with the shape selected, just start typing. Hey, Doc joined us again. That's great to have you back, Doc. And so we can do that. And we can come back up here, click in my shape, and then go ahead and add another shape. And we'll say shape below. So now we have four VPs. And we can just go ahead and start typing with that shape selected. Now, this brings up a good point. We've got four VPs. Maybe you want to keep track of them by seniority. So the ones that who are most senior are on the left-hand side as you move up the chart. So the next person that would probably replace me might be Peter Pan. If you want to go ahead and change the order and have it in a hierarchical structure of seniority, left being the most senior, then with the shapes selected like Bubba Brain, Maybe we hired him before we did Fred Wilson, so he would be to the left of Fred Wilson with his shape selected. Come up here to the Create Graphic group, and you can go ahead and move up. Well, there we go. Bubba Brain. And so, hey, if you're going down, you're going to the right. But as you continue to move up, you can get all the way to the most senior position. In any case, that may be a little bit subjective. It depends on how you want to organize your chart, but that's how it works within the Word organization chart. If you want to move something to the left, it's going to be up. You move them to the right, it's going to be down. But if you want to move them up or down within the actual chart, like let's say Fred Wilson here, go ahead and select his box, and if he's like been demoted, and then come up here and say you want to, well, there you go, demote. And what that does is it will demote him and put him under the shape that he's adjacent to, or the shape that's on the left-hand side. So if I go ahead and choose Bubba Brain, and I come up here and I click on Demote, he automatically goes to the shape that's more senior of the two VPs, which is, well, Groucho, because that's moving up when you go to the left as opposed to moving down, going to the right. So he wouldn't move down and go underneath Fred, but Bubba, when he's between the two, will go to the left, moving up. And so if you're like, well, wait a second, I don't want him to be a subordinate to Groucho. Well, what you can do is you can give him a temporary promotion. Hey, your VP, 
Maybe you want him to be a sub to Peter Pan, then you can go ahead and move him up, and then go ahead and demote him, and now he's a subordinate to Peter Pan. Now, as far as the hanging goes, or the layout, if we don't want Bubba Brain hanging to the right of Peter Pan, but to the left, then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and select the shape above him, and then come up here to the Create Graphic Group, and click on Layout, and say that you want to hang him left. So everything that's subordinate to the shape that you have selected, instead of hanging to the right, click left, and he flips and goes to the left. Sweet. And speaking of switching things up, you can come back up here and flip it from right to left or left to right. So when I click on right to left, Peter Pan flips over to Fred, and Fred goes over to Peter Pan. So there's the axle right there that it flips across. And so if I go ahead and click on it, there you go, Fred Wilson is now the senior. Oh, and Doc gets flipped over to the other side. So if I had two admin assistants, then Doc would switch over here. Then the one who's over here would switch over there. So there's the access that gets flipped across. And so if I want to go back, just click on it to deselect it, and we're back to where we were. Now let's move on to other design options like, ooh, different styles here. Let's click on more and see what's available. We've got, what's this? Intense effect. Ooh, that's pretty intense. How about something 3D, something inset, or polished. Select that, and then to give it some couleur, come up here and click on change colors, and you can see the default selected accent 1. Maybe you want to choose something. You can hover over it. Like, how about colorful range accent colors 3 to 4? Okay. Select that, and that's okay with me. And then the layouts, click on more. And let's see what that one is. Half circle organization chart. Ooh, that's pretty fancy. Well, I'll leave it as is. Let me click off of it. And if you want to focus on one particular shape, in other words, you like the general colors, but maybe Doc, you know, keeping her purple. Yeah. Let's go ahead and change the color there. With the shape selected, you can come up here and click on the Format tab and do a Shape Fill. And you can see when I hover over it, it just updates her shape with some color that, okay, maybe blue. And in fact, if I come in here and I click and drag and select the text, I can go ahead and change the text size, make it 10 point. And it just focuses on that text box and doesn't update all the others. So you can get really proprietary with that. And in fact, you can hover over the resizing handles for that box or that shape and click and drag to push it in about yay big. Ooh, maybe click and drag a little bit below so we can see the AA. So that way you can go ahead, resize the boxes. And if you want to do a lot at the same time, then go ahead and click on one. Hold down the shift key and click on the borders of the others. And then go ahead and hover over one of the resizing handles of the three that you have selected and click and drag and push them in. And there you go. So that way you can fit more within a limited area here. And then go ahead and resize the overall smart art graphic. And let's come over here, click on the Home tab, turn on the codes for the paragraph here. Do center align. Or like I said, you can go ahead and select it. Click on the border of it and change the layout options, move it around. Let's go back to the Design tab. And if you're like, you know what, that's just not cutting it for me. I'd like to start over again. Well, you can do a reset. Click on it, and we're back to where we started. Oh, please don't make me do this video again. Hey, you can watch it again, but don't make me go through that again. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos. Now, this brings up a good point. We've got four VPs. Maybe you want to keep track of them by seniority. So the ones that who are most senior are on the left-hand side as you move up the chart. So the next person that would probably replace me might be Peter Pan. If you want to go ahead and change the order and have it in a hierarchical structure of seniority, left being the most senior, then with the shape selected like Bubba Brain, maybe we hired him before we did Fred Wilson, so he would be to the left of Fred Wilson with his shape selected, come up here to the Create Graphic group, and you can go ahead and move up. Well, there we go. Bubba Brain.
And so, hey, if you're going down, you're going to the right. But as you continue to move up, you can get all the way to the most senior position. In any case, that may be a little bit subjective. It depends on how you want to organize your chart, but that's how it works within the Word organization chart. If you want to move something to the left, it's going to be up. You move them to the right, it's going to be down. But if you want to move them up or down within the actual chart, like let's say Fred Wilson here, go ahead and select his box, and if he's like been demoted, and then come up here and say you want to, well, there you go, demote. And what that does is it will demote him and put him under the shape that he's adjacent to, or the shape that's on the left-hand side. So if I go ahead and choose Bubba Brain, and I come up here and I click on Demote, he automatically goes to the shape that's more senior of the two VPs, which is, well, Groucho, because that's moving up when you go to the left as opposed to moving down, going to the right. So he wouldn't move down and go underneath Fred, but Bubba, when he's between the two, will go to the left, moving up. And so if you're like, well, wait a second, I don't want him to be a subordinate to Groucho. Well, what you can do is you can give him a temporary promotion. Hey, your VP. Maybe you want him to be a sub to Peter Pan. Then you can go ahead and move him up and then go ahead and demote him. And now he's a subordinate to Peter Pan. Now, as far as the hanging goes or the layout, if we don't want Bubba Brain hanging to the right of Peter Pan, but to the left, then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and select the shape above him and then come up here to the Create Graphic Group and click on Layout and say that you want to hang him left. So everything that's subordinate to the shape that you have selected, instead of hanging to the right, click left, and he flips and goes to the left. Sweet. And speaking of switching things up, you can come back up here and flip it from right to left or left to right. So when I click on right to left, Peter Pan flips over to Fred and Fred goes over to Peter Pan. So there's the axle right there that it flips across. And so if I go ahead and click on it, there you go. Fred Wilson is now the senior. Oh, and Doc gets flipped over to the other side. So if I had two admin assistants, then Doc would switch over here. Then the one who's over here would switch over there. So. There's the access that gets flipped across, and so if I want to go back, just click on it to deselect it, and we're back to where we were. Now let's move on to other design options like, ooh, different styles here. Let's click on more and see what's available. We've got, what's this? Intense effect. Ooh, that's pretty intense. How about something 3D, something inset, or polished. Select that, and then to give it some couleur, come up here and click on change colors. And you can see the default selected accent one. Maybe you want to choose something, you can hover over it. Like, how about colorful range accent colors three to four? Okay. Select that, and that's okay with me. And then the layouts, click on more. And let's see what that one is half circle organization chart. Ooh, that's pretty fancy. Well, I'll leave it as is. Let me click off of it. And if you want to focus on one particular shape, in other words, you like the general colors, but maybe Doc, you know, keeping her purple. Yeah. Let's go ahead and change the color there. With the shape selected, you can come up here and click on the Format tab and do a Shape Fill. And you can see when I hover over it, it just updates her shape with some color that, okay, maybe blue. And in fact, if I come in here and I click and drag and select the text, I can go ahead and change the text size, make it 10 point. And it just focuses on that text box and doesn't update all the others. So you can get really proprietary with that. And in fact, you can hover over the resizing handles for that box or that shape and click and drag to push it in about yay big. Ooh, maybe click and drag a little bit below so we can see the AA. So that way you can go ahead, resize the boxes. And if you want to do a lot at the same time, then go ahead and click on one. Hold down the shift key and click on the borders of the others. And then go ahead and hover over one of the resizing handles of the three that you have selected and click and drag and push them in. And there you go. So that way you can fit more within a limited area here. And then go ahead and resize the overall smart art graphic. And let's come over here, click on the Home tab, turn on the codes for the paragraph here. And do center align. Or like I said, you can go ahead and select it. Click on the border of it and change the layout options, move it around. Let's go back to the design tab. And if you're like, you know what, that's just not cutting it for me. I'd like to start over again. 
Well, you can do a reset. Click on it, and we're back to where we started. Oh, please don't make me do this video again. Hey, you can watch it again, but don't make me go through that again. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.